you are trusting God and trying to let Him be, that we shouldn't be frustrated. So we'll work on that today. That's our theme today. Uh, but I'm going to start out with a, a verse that's going to help us get started. Uh, Psalm 106, verse 1. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Yeah, so I'm going to ask you guys to put a little bit that. Uh, before we start, I want to tell you about me and Carrie. Um, we were walking on the beach the other day. And guess what we found? We found out this bottle. There's a weird thing. It looks like a regular bottle. It's like this uh, uh, bottle. And it turns to let me rub it. And she rubbed the bottle. And guess what happened? A genie popped out of the horse. This is a true story. <laughs> the genie came out and said, Karen, I will give you one wish. And then I will give you one wish. Karen says, I wish that we could have a on the tropical island without any hurricanes for the rest of our lives, me and Ed, in a house on the tropical island. And poof! It smoked you. And there we were, on a house on a tropical island. It didn't look like there would be any hurricanes, and we were so happy. The genie turned to me and said, Ed, what would you like for your wish? I said, wow, this is amazing. My wish is that Karen would be 30 years younger than me. <laughs> Poof! I was 90 years old. <laughs> <laughs> well, the moral of the, the, the joke is the story. Genies aren't real, and God is not your genie. But Jesus is real. God is real. And Jesus is in verse 7. Ask, and it will be given unto you. Now, if it's in the will of God, I mean, I've been asking for a million dollars, and, that, that, and God said I couldn't handle it. Uh, I asked him with a lottery, and God said he couldn't handle it. It's not in God's will for me, because I can't even handle the money I have already. Mm. Um, but again, it said, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek. Are we seeking? That's all part of this. It's not just one. Ask, and seek, and you will find. Knock. And we will uh, be up to that door. Okay, so again, anyway, I just want to thank the lot of you. Uh, we had yesterday's weather was great. We had a choker tree over at our community, choker tree over at the firehouse. We got to see a lot of people. We gave out a lot of information about Tabor. Uh, we gave them a lot of information about how they got treasures in heaven. Uh, that was our theme. And uh, because of you, we were able to get out candy. And, and you know there's a lot of rascals on uh, when you're trunk or treating, they go around more than once. <laughs> and we were okay with that. Because of you, we could give them a couple extra pieces of candy. And they were just great kids and have a lot of fun. And we got so much more candy. We had them on the welcome center. So if uh ask your mom and dad, but if you want some sugar, some candy, um, you know, take some with you or if you want to it's take some or something else. What's that? It's in Weller Hall now. Oh, it's in Weller Hall now, okay. Okay, so again, but I got to make sure I thank so many people who gave so much candy. Um, we had a really great time, and uh, again, I think a lot of people were blessed. Also, I don't know if you noticed when you came in today, a lot of projects we do sometimes takes a team, okay, more than one person. Uh, we want to thank some people that started painting our mail spots a while back. There were always just plain wood, so we said, huh, I'm going to paint that. They started painting it, and, and it started looking nice. And then another group of people came in this week and started to get this. Now, we're going to put more people in there, but we just want to thank the people who uh, made it look beautiful. They don't, don't like when I mention names, I get that, because uh, they just want to serve and, and do that. But so thank you. Uh, it's looking great. And before you know it, we're going to have the best looking nail slots around. Um, also, I bet there's all kinds of things that people are doing secretly, quietly. Somebody's putting uh, plants out front again. You know, it's later in the year, our server plants out also in our planners. We got some nice plants. So, whoever did that, thank you. And I'm sure so there's many other things that many other people are doing that I don't necessarily see. And you got here to thank you, but please know that God knows what you're doing. And that's why we should do anything. Not that thank you, man. We give you a, a praise or a thing of, uh, thanks up here. I just like to give gratitude because I'm truly sure thankful. But again, thank you all for just being faithful. In every which way you are. Uh, so anyway, uh, we have some things coming up on Monday. We have 
But hold on, yep, yep. Monday is our history night with Jay Arno. Um, so we want to put seven o'clock. Um, again, a big family in our church here. We love for you to come and learn more about the history of Jay Arno um, in our town. And then we have a blood drive coming up this week. Uh, who knows what days they are? Wednesday. Now we know on Thursday we still have a lot of slots opened up. So if you might need your blood, we need blood. Um, Chuck, do you need blood? Not I need more. Yeah, yeah, so again, this is how this system works out. Thanks for coming today, Chuck. And, and that's how we do the blood drives. That's why we love to promote it. Because our own people are alive today because of the blood drive. So again, it's Wednesday. Wednesday is pretty much filled up. You can go online and check it out. But Thursday, we have lots of gates available. We would love to fill all those gates up. So that's coming up this week. Uh, so I think that's all of the event. Oh, no, wait a minute. Our prison, um, our mid prison ministry, sending them Christmas cards. They're due today. So you can still fill them out. There's only some still left out there. Fill them out. Um, but they got to be done today because Mary is taken on tomorrow. Okay, so, so today is the deadline. But again, we uh, still take some cards in there. Tells you how to do it. It's real simple. Um, and just got a little bit of that, that would be a, a little blessing to serve you. All right, so we are ready to worship the Lord? We are. Yeah. All right, we're going to start with our worship video and get things started. In the tapestry of time, the story unfolds of a faithful God whose love is forever endless. To the lowest valleys and the highest mountains, this steadfast presence is always with us. In every trial and every test we face, he holds us close in his unchanging love. When shadows of doubt gather around us, his faithfulness shines as a brilliant sunrise. With arms stretched out, he guides our way, a beacon of hope in the darkest day. In every moment, his promises hold true. He paints the sky with hues of dawn, reminding us that we're never alone. Through every season, in joy or strife, God's faithfulness is the anchor of life. So let us trust in the unwavering hand as we journey through this shifting land. For in his love, if you find our peace, he is always and forever faithful.
spend this time with you and to sense your love and presence in this place. May you sense our hearts tuned to you. Speak to us through the words sung and spoken so that we can be better at being faithful to you and all that you are doing. Continue to guide and direct our paths so that we can be one with you every hour of every day. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. All right, James. How are we doing? Doing the whole lot of fun. Is that all right? Do you want to travel? All right. I can put my good chairs for you. Yeah, I'll just sit over here. I want to tell you a story about a pumpkin. Now, you may have heard this before, you might not have, but it's so good. I like to say it all the time before Halloween comes. Is that all right? <coughs> do you guys know what you do with a pumpkin? What do you do with a pumpkin? Yeah, what do you do? You can paint it. What else can you do? Did you ever eat it? Did you ever have pumpkin pie? Yeah, so there's lots of How about pumpkin seeds? Yeah, yes, a lot of good things. But a lot of times, like you said, we want to make that jack o in our mouth, right? And that's sort of like being a um, Christian. So did you ever have to go find the pumpkin? Did you have to search for a pumpkin out the pumpkin pack? Did you ever go out there and find one? Even if you went to the shore, you'd have to pick one, right? And that's just like God. God picked you. Just like you chose a pumpkin, God chose you. And then sometimes the pumpkins are dirty, right? Because they're out there in the dirt growing. So we had to clean up the pumpkin, right? We don't want a dirty pumpkin. And that's what God <laughs> wants to do to you. He wants to clean you up too. Because he wants to make us, we don't want us to be dirty. God wants to clean us up, right? And then, what do we do with the pumpkin? We cut the top off, right? And then we open it up. And then we take out all the yucky stuff, right? All that, now that might be some of the stuff for the pumpkin pie or the seed. But that's not stuff we want on jack or man, right? And just like we take out that and get all the gook out of there, the pumpkin guts, I like to call it. When we get all that out of there, that's what God does to us. He goes inside of us. And he wants to take out all the bad stuff in us, like greed and anger and lying and being mean and taking stuff that's not ours and not listening to our mom and dad. <laughs> All those things are bad things that God wants to take out of us. And guess what then he puts in us? What do we put in the jack o -lantern? The light, so God wants to put his light in us. And when God puts his light in us, guess what happens? He wants to carve and put a smile on our face, right? And when he puts his light in us, then we light up with God's light in us, and then we shine for everyone else, and everyone else gets to see our smile. Can I see your smile? Does Jesus make you smile? Yes, because God is good. Bad things happen when we trust God and help us. How's the light doing? Your foot. Okay, we play soccer yet? What you see? Okay, all right. How you doing? Yeah, because you have this. We were praying for you, right? Now, do we have a birthday? Yeah, was that fun? Yeah, that makes you smile, right? And how are you doing? All right, you ready for Halloween? Okay, well, let's remember when it's dark and that can be scary. We don't have to be scared because Jesus put His light in us, and we don't have to be scared of the dark. And God said, don't be afraid, have faith. We trust in God and know that he's always going to take care of us, okay? So God, we thank you for pumpkins. We thank you for jack-o'-lanterns. We thank you for the fun of this season. But most of all, we thank you for these children. We thank you for Jesus, uh, who was to put his light in us and put a smile in us. And we thank you all for the Holy Spirit who goes in us and takes out all the big stuff in us and helps us to be better. Thank you, God, for fall holidays and fun, but most of all, for your son who died for us. And that if we follow him and believe that he's the son of God, we'll go to heaven. And we don't have to worry about dying because sometimes 
Because that's what we get scared of during this holiday, of scared things in death. But Lord, we thank you for being the light in the darkness, giving us faith over fear, and realizing that we're going to live forever in heaven because of your Son, Jesus Christ. We ask this all in his name, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, you want to go to junior church now? All right, can you put your chairs back and then we'll go to junior church? All right. Well, okay. <laughs> Come up and uh, work on a message from you all. We've been uh, talking about time. And, um, you know, there's a lot of great songs about time. And I know we haven't done a song in a while, but we'll get one in today. Uh, don't you worry. Uh, but really, I wanted to uh, spot on with you. We can't talk about time. The Bible has a lot to say about time. But the neat thing about time is that there's a whole book in a sense, the book of Ecclesiastes. Now, for my you need to go to Ecclesiastes 3, because maybe that's the most famous part of it. But um, if you're okay with it, I think we're going to go through the whole book of Ecclesiastes as we deal with time. Because it's been a lot since we've done a book. And let's do the book of Ecclesiastes and learn what God has to say about time. Um, so as we come to uh, Ecclesiastes, um, we, uh, we see a Solomon who's kind of frustrated with life. Anybody here frustrated? You don't have to raise your hands, but uh, frustrated with work. Frustrated with our nation and the politics that's going on. And again, I'm just saying, you know, frustrated with your life. I didn't say what, I said with your life. Okay, it's fine. Make sure I did not say that yet. Don't get, don't get, don't be stupid, okay? That's it. Don't get to be stupid in church. Okay, but anyway, um, so we get that, um, that it can be frustrating, but good news is we have a book that talks about when you're frustrated with life, the book of Ecclesiastes, what should you do? And really he's asking, you know, what's the point of it all on Solomon? Um, so if we go into this Solomon, this is old man Solomon. This isn't, um, Proverbs Solomon when he's young. This isn't King Solomon when he just became king at a very young age. This isn't Song of Solomon when he's uh, falling in love with this, this woman. And those are good books to study to it. But this is Ecclesiastes. This is old man Solomon. Now, before our song, I thought we could go to um, Neil Young. Now, he's a so called old man. But I want to switch it around because that's a young man singing to an old man. How about if we had an old man? See it to a young man. And maybe it would go something like this. Young man, take a look at my life. I'm a lot like you were. The lost, such a cause. Give me things that don't get lost. Like a coin that won't get tossed. Rolling home to you. Young man, take a look at your life. I'm a lot like you. I need someone to love me the whole day through. I don't want to look in my eyes and you can tell that it's true. All right, so don't fall asleep. Don't fall asleep. Don't worry. Yeah, no, yeah, don't worry. Where's my fall sign? <laughs> but anyway, um, so we... Um, we go to the book of Ecclesiastes, and let me just read to you the first 11 verses. And you can sense the Solomon is just in a bad place. Maybe you often are in a bad place. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 1, starting out. The words of the teacher, son of David, king in Jerusalem. Meaningless. Meaningless, says the teacher. Utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. He mentions meaningless 38 times. So, to get the point for where he's coming from, what do people gain from all their labors at which they toil under the sun? Generations come and generations go, but the earth remains forever. 
The sun rises and the sun sets and hurries back to where it rises. The wind blows to the south and turns to the north. Round and round it goes, ever returning on its course. All streams flow into the sea. And the sea is never full. To the place where the streams come from, there they return again. All things are wearisome. More than one can say, the eye never has enough of seeing. Nor is the ear that is filled of hearing. What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which one can say, Look, this is something new. It was here already, long ago. It was here before our time. No one remembers the former generations, and even those yet to come will not be remembered by those who follow them. Let's pray. God, thank you for your holy word. Help us to understand it, because Lord, we have been depressed at times, frustrated at times, and we believe Solomon inspired by you, through your Holy Spirit, has a message for us today. May the words of my mouth and the intensity of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord. Amen. So again, um, just here we are with this um, meaningless, 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 as we get the verse two there, um, three times, every, or four times, everything is meaningless, utterly meaningless. Now, for, uh, I know we got some Bible nerds out there, uh, some King James version people. If you have a, for King James or your vanity, vanity, vanity. Uh, but the NIV and other popular translations say meaningless. Uh, but it's an interesting thing, this word meaningless, the, the Hebrew word would be heaven. And it doesn't necessarily mean meaningless. The English interpretation doesn't do it full justice. Um, the interpretation would be um, for heaven. It literally means a mist, a vapor. And in a sense, that describes life. All throughout the Bible, James talks about life is just a vapor. Um, we're here for just a short time. Um, sometimes you see the fog in the morning, and before you know it, the fog has disappeared. Uh, but in a sense, he's saying it's uh, not just like for a long time, but also this mist, this vapor. It's used in the sense of an enigma. Uh, you see something like beauty. Like um, happiness and, and good things, um, and you don't grasp it. And like if you're trying to grasp smoke, um, if you look at the clouds, they look like they're cotton, right? They look like they're solid, but they're not. You see planes fly right through, maybe you were in a plane, and you see, like, oh my gosh, I touch out there. it's like cotton candy. But it's not. It's just vapor, and you wouldn't be able to touch it. Man. And that's the sense of this pebble. It's like you grasp it, and it's gone. And he's saying that's the hard part about life. There are all these beautiful things in life, and these good things in life, but when I try to grasp it, when I try to understand it, it disappears. And that's the nature of where this word pebble, meaning is, is taking us in this um, um, explanation here. So we want to uh, just be aware of that. As we go on, I also want to talk about the word Ecclesiastes. It's an interesting word. Um, the Greek word means one who calls people. Um, so we are, Ecclesiastes, one who calls people. Um, in our context, it would be the assembly of the people, or in our context, the church. So Ecclesiastes, for a lot of people, mean a preacher or a teacher, as it's been interpreted here, Ecclesiastes, or again, we say a, a pastor. So we can get that idea of Ecclesiastes, uh, that word thrown around a lot. Um, again, as we get into this, um, we have Solomon, um, King of Jerusalem. Um, now, th it doesn't say exactly Solomon, okay? Now, most scholars believe it is Solomon because it says, um, Son of David, King of Jerusalem. Now, there's not a lot of other people that can fit, but some people are like, well, 
stand on it. So you got some people say it's not Solomon, but most scholars agree it is Solomon. Uh, so he uh, ruled um, Jerusalem for a long time. He also wrote, as we said, Proverbs. He wrote Proverbs early in his life. He wrote uh, Song of Solomon in the middle of his life. And he wrote um, Ecclesiastes later. So I mean, he, he's all, they hear they together in the Bible. They, uh, I think they go uh, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, then Song of Solomon. So they're not quite in order in the Bible. And there's a reason for that. But yes, but just to know this is old man Solomon. He almost sets it when we're reading. Um, he's looking back on his life. And he's um, like the rear view mirror, like retrospective. And he's saying, like, a lot of regret. And then he's saying to the other one, young man, take a look at my life. I'm a lot like you. So he's, he's, you really get that feeling of he wants you to learn from him. Um, don't make the same mistakes that I made. And he's going to tell us all throughout this book, I've done it all. I've been there. I experienced it all. I experimented with it all. I was looking for meaning. I had all the money in the world. I have every opportunity, I have all the wealth in the world, all the power in the world. I tried it all, and I'm still that wanting. It's a really a sad story, but it's honest, and it's brutal, and I think that's what helps us, that he is being honest, and he's asking questions that should be answered. Uh, so again, uh, as he comes to us, he's asking these uh, questions. Interestingly, he is a believer. Okay, so we know he sounds like Eeyore. Any Eeyore fans out there? All right, so you know. Oh, this will never work. Or, oh, yeah. But here's the neat thing. Why do they put Eeyore in that book? Would the book be better without Eeyore? No. We need Eeyores in our life. Because how many people don't they should identify with Eeyore? Well, maybe certain things you identify with you. So again, we're just recognizing. Why is there an ask for the brat? So it's Sesame Street. Yeah, well, it's there's no such people like Oscar, and we're not going to make a show without them. We're being honest in what we do. Okay, so there's always an Eeyore, there's an Oscar, and there's all the other different personalities. If you look at Sesame Street, there's a third, there's a prover, and I'm going to bet that you identify with at least one of them very closely. And I always thought everyone identified with Ernie. And you know why I identify with Ernie? <laughs> but then I start realizing everyone doesn't identify with Ernie. And that's what they reveal it. There's different psychology there. So anyway, here we are with him asking him more questions. He does believe in God. He's not an atheist, but he does have these problems with God. He's frustrated with God. Now, I know no one here has actually been frustrated with God. But again, he's, he's with God and he's asking the right questions. He's wondering, God, um, you know, okay, why is there pain and suffering? We talked about that, so I'm going to do that. But he's asking all these things about life and why, why do good people die? And why do the, the, the people that are rotten, why do they prosper? Why, God, why? And he has all these questions, and again, he comes down to this, he had this moment, and it's like, he's feeling like it's all meaningless. Why do what? Why follow that? Does it really even matter if I follow God? That's where he is right now. Uh, and we'll talk more about his background, because his background has a lot to say about how he feels. Um, so if we get into um, Solomon, um, maybe you're familiar with Solomon. He's a one, not the firstborn of David's sons, but he's one of David's sons. Um, David, um, he starts out right um, in 1 Kings chapter 2. Um, David, this is the David, the lion of David, and David of Bathsheba, King David, um, who makes Israel great. Um, he dies in 1 Kings 2, and then Solomon becomes the king of Israel. Now, most scholars trying to guess at his age. Some people say 17 to 18. So a young man, take a look at my life. I'm a lot like you. So he knows what it means to be a young man. Um, Josephus, I'm not a Christian, but the Jewish historian of the time, writes that Solomon is actually 14. So we don't know if it's truly 14. I don't know why scholars say 17 or 18, but we know he's a teenager, okay? 
Uh, so now, if you remember when you were a teenager, uh, how much you had a, a whole bill of rights and you knew everything, uh, and he's in charge of the most powerful kingdom in the world at that time. Uh, we're talking 900 BC, and, and that stands for before Christmas, um, because that's before Jesus was born. Okay? Uh, now we don't have to wait that long for Christmas. How long do we have to wait? Two months. Yeah, not even. Not even. Okay. So, so this is a famous part of uh, in First Kings chapter three. Uh, God appears to this young Solomon in the dream. <coughs> And God says, Solomon, I will give you whatever you ask. All right? Now, you heard what Pastor Ed was asking for, you know? And, and you know where Pastor Ed's at. You know, that's not good. But um, uh, he says, I will give you this. This young Solomon says, God, I want wisdom and discernment that I can properly govern these people. Maybe that's a good prayer for whoever wins the election. That they were praying to God, God, give me wisdom and discernment that I can lead these people according to your will. And, and I'd be okay with that if they, like they said, uh, they pray to God and listen to God and follow God. Okay? Um, but I'm not sure if we get that. And I get it. They're human. Um, so am uh, I. But anyway, but God was so impressed with Solomon's request that God says, You didn't ask for a long life, you didn't ask for riches. I'm going to give you what you ask for, wisdom and discerning, the one in the country, the one in Israel, but I'm also going to give you those two things. I'm going to give you long life, and I'm going to give you riches too. So Solomon is blessed, and um, he becomes famous for being so wise. And you probably heard some stories about cutting the baby in half. The no babies are harmed in this story, okay? But, but he, and we will go into maybe in another week. But he's famous for his sword. So there's wisdom. People come from all over to hear from the wisdom of Solomon. But unfortunately, Solomon, like Pastor Ed, squandered his blessing. God blessed him greatly. And for a while, he was faithful. But over time, he squandered it. Now, I know you're all saying, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. So let's sort of wind that back to Pastor Ed. Okay, um, God blessed me with a pizzeria. I had no money. I had nothing. I had student loans. And, and through God's very mercy grace, I received a pizzeria. I kid you not. That's how good God is. And God was just not that good. I also got a house. I had no money. God stayed in the house. And I'll tell you more about that later. But I received these things. And, and I'm like, wow, thank you, God. And I'm recognizing it's nothing I did. It just fell in my lap. It's all I did said, uh, okay. That's all I did. And I clearly felt when I got the pizzeria, God saying to me, I'm a God, I never had a pizzeria. I'm still living at home right this point. And, and all these other things, and I'm like, you know, God, we've been right in the place. But I was never the owner. I don't know if their money's working out or not. And as long as there was a clear sign from God saying, just trust me, and everything will work out. And for many years, I did that. I just trusted God, and things worked out. For many years, until things weren't working out. And then I said, well, God probably needs my help. Because all of a sudden, I'm kind of a smart guy. I know how to do pizza. All right? I, I, I know. And, and I've got people in town. Uh, we're a pretty good restaurant. We're not just a pizza. We're more like a restaurant. Not only fancy. I don't want to be fancy. I want to be good food at a fair price and good service. And, and I think if you can give people that good things, and we'd be happy to place it. And it was just wonderful. And there was another restaurant town. We had no problems with them. But they were open for breakfast. And a lot of people were coming to me saying, you know, we need that place over there is smaller than your place. And, um, and we're always waiting for breakfast. Why don't you open for breakfast? And I'm like, oh, I can't. I, I'm working a lot. I was already. I, I can't. I can't. And like, well, why don't you just open up on the weekends? That's where the real breakfast tree is. Sundays. And I'm like, wow. Because things are getting hard now. Uh, things are going tough now. I need some extra money, and I got that little voice in me. The people want it. I should open up on a Sunday morning. But I heard God say to me, you know if you open up on a Sunday morning, you ain't coming to church. I said, oh, no, God, I'm not. I'll go to church. I'll go to church. I'll just be honest. I'll go to church. I'll go to church. And, uh, you know, I opened up, and we had breakfast, and it was wonderful. And it helped my money situation for that season. 
But I didn't go to church. I squandered my blessing. God blessed it. And I started to do my own thing. And I stopped. I, I was wandering from God. I still love God, but I'm not going to church. And that's not okay. And guess what happened in time? Um, you know, doing it my way, um, it, things didn't go well. Okay? That's all we'll say that. Now, I didn't go out of business or nothing, but I realized I had squandered the blessing that God gave me. I had stopped trusting God. I should be trusting God. And so Solomon kind of gets himself into that same mess uh, where he squanders what the Lord had given him. Uh, he didn't apply his own wisdom. Can you believe it? This is Solomon who wrote Proverbs. Uh, trust in the Lord. Um, your light is more than to my path. I will trust in me now on my own understanding. He wrote these things. I'm sure he followed those things for a season. But eventually, it doesn't apply to himself. He talked it, but he doesn't walk it. And he's got these problems. In 1 Kings chapter 3, it says, he made a very unwise decision. He made a political alliance with the Pharaoh of Egypt. Now that should be like, what? Um, hello, I delivered you from Egypt. The Israel people, now you're making an alliance with Egypt? And, and there was the gods of Egypt? And you made an alliance with them? And worse than that, to seal the deal of this alliance, he marries the Pharaoh's daughter. And God clearly told him not to do this uh, because they don't worship the same God. I delivered you from them, Becca. I said that I am the God of Israel, the one true God. I defeated their God. And now you're bringing that pagan worship, that false God, into your home, into the palace. And God said not to do that. Uh, but he went ahead and did it. He didn't trust God. Like, I didn't trust him. He didn't trust God to keep the peace of Israel. God got him there. Why can't you trust God? No, but I need to make alliances. And, and you think Solomon would stop there? Uh, let me read to you 1 Kings, it's not going to be up on the board, but you'll get it. Um, chapter 11, verses 1 through 4. This is what Solomon does that after marrying Pharaoh's daughter. King Solomon, however, loved many foreign women besides Pharaoh's daughter, the Moabites, the Ammonites. The Ammonites, the Sidonites, and the Hittites. They were from nations about which the Lord had told Israel, you must not intermarry with them because they will surely turn your hearts after their own gods. Nevertheless, Solomon had fasted them in love. He had 700 wives. You talk about being frustrated. <laughs> Young man, take a look at your life. 700 wives, it doesn't end there, and 300 concubines. And his wives led him astray. What a sad verse. As Solomon grew old, his wives turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was not fully devoted to the Lord as the heart of David, his father, had been. So that's kind of what happens to Solomon. Um, and again, if we go back to our original verse, just notice this one fact about women. Um, and he's frustrated. Uh, let's go back to Ecclesiastes 1. Let's go to that verse 2 where he's saying he's got a million three, seven hundred plus three hundred women in his life. Meaningless. Meaningless. It's only meaningless. And he's losing his mind. Which I get it. I mean, I, I hope you, I'm so to come to you. I don't, and I, I shouldn't say this because that's when the devil comes in. Another woman is not my problem. Now, I have plenty of other problems. That's not my problem because I can't even imagine how some guys do having more than one woman in their life. Like, you know, I got one like an affair or something. I take every bit of my energy and strength to be there emotionally and responsibly for my wife. I can't imagine trying to do two. That would just be, again, I would lose my mind. So 700, I mean, of course he's going insane. It wasn't meant to be. Uh, verse 8, if you jump down to verse 8, he's saying, and he didn't write all this, all things are wearisome. The eye 
as enough, as never enough to see. Because he's seen 700 wives and 300 concubines. And he said, and then he says in verse 10, there's nothing new under the sun. Hello? Yeah. And then he's saying, verse 10, is there anything of which one can say, look, there's something new? No, you dummy. All right? Um, so again, we get where he's coming from. And here it is, you know, again, we're going to be in Ecclesiastes for a couple weeks. Here's a spoiler alert, because I don't want to just leave this hanging as you're crossing the state. Solomon comes around at the end, at the very end of this book. It's going to take 11 chapters to get there. If it's not going to be 11 weeks, we're going to condense some of it. But um, again, he's saying um, this mist. He's saying, don't reject the mist. This is his message. This is his life lesson. Again, I know it's a spoiler but I don't want to leave this. His point is that mist, that goodness, the justice that we see, the beauty, and, and these things that disappear when we grab them, he's saying, uh, accept them. Uh, see that they are gifts from God. Okay? They are gifts from God and recognizing the many blessings that God gives us. Right? God, and again, don't miss out the simple things, Psalm is saying. A good meal, a good friend. See a beautiful sunset. These are all gifts of God. And they're sometimes temporary. They don't always last forever. So we must accept these gifts of God that are sometimes temporary. temporary. And he said, acknowledge that there are many things in life that we have control over. But there are many things that we do not have control over. And that's what I think he's trying to do is control things that he can't control. And we're the same way. We have many things that we can't control and say the things that we can't control, like an election. You can do your part, but you can't control the outcome. But what can we do? We can trust God, knowing everything's in God's control. And I'm not saying that what happens is what God wants. I'm just saying God will work it all out together for good, Romans 8, 28. So no matter what happens. So he's saying, at the end, our response, as we often say, our response is to be faithful. The writer of Hebrew says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Be faithful. And, and he almost, in so many words, this is a great song. He says, all you have to do is trust and obey. For there is no other way but to trust in God. Now we're going to have Sonny come up in the bed in a minute to say, to see us so about trusting in God. But before we do that, I want us to stand up and speak for everyone to hear what we believe. All right, are you ready? I believe in God, Father of the Lord, and Maker of Jesus Christ is the only Son of the Lord. Those who see by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered from the conscious body, so crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to the others, the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Again, trust in God. And trust means even when it's hard. It's easy to trust when it's easy. But when things are hard, that's what faith is. Trust in God. And uh, let's see about it now.
a time of service where we have an opportunity to share with one another any prayer concerns that we might have. It's like this during that flight, so we can play two weeks and people are watching it as well. Um, there's two things. I'd like to ask for prayers for Samantha. She had a nice visit to the hospital last night for the wiring. And um, hopefully her body gets back to a, a level state. And I'd like to ask for prayers for Brian, who will be going through surgeries or in, in November. God has set me free, <laughs> and on Monday, so does that. So we still have that, so I just want to um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> but after I go down and get my monitor up on Monday, I'm going to go right to the probation department and meet my new probation officer. So I'm asking for prayers for me to be one. Because I've had bad ones in the past, and you know they're all about sending me back for any little thing if you get the wrong guy. And I don't think I have to worry about it. My life speaks for itself at this point, but um, you just never know. So. I'd like to ask a prayer for my sister Mollyet. She's been fighting cancer for about four years. And she just got a diagnosis that it has spread to her hands. So she is very strong and independent. She has the best for help. And I really like her. Yeah, I'd like a prayer for a friend of my son there who we grew up with. Um, he has twisted cancer and then they took to the high valley the other day. And I'm just praying that. Everything works out for me, they'll be okay. Is Chuck is here? Yes. Amen to that. And Cindy. Yes. I had a prayer they rushed my father to the hospital last night. My brother Keith, they suspect he might have had a script, I'm not sure yet, they're going to do an MRI. But we're uh, just praying that he's in God's hands. And he believes, so he believes it. Well, I'm getting this running around. Um, also, prayer for Jane Cole. Um, she's in a car accident on Saturday and with her sister, who was up from Florida because her phone was damaged. Um, to a hurricane and Anyway, um, both of them taken to the hospital, and Jane has eight broken ribs and a broken sternum. Yes, and her sister had both of them been put in patchy collars. So uh, her sister was sent home uh, back to Jane's house while Jane's kept in the hospital overnight. So, very for her. I'd like prayer for my niece, Michelle. Um, she suffered with pneumonia right now. And um, again, some people don't know because they don't, they're not on the prayer list, but um, Anna May's brother in law, Gary, um, had his leg amputated. And um, we're still recovering, but it's still a lot of pain. And we're still praying that it heals, right? Because there's still no guarantee that even amputating your leg, this is a so, so okay. So we're so praying for that also. Okay. Lord, we thank you for your presence with us this morning. We thank you that you already know the concerns that are on our hearts. But Lord, we share them with each other so that we can all encourage each other and lift those things that concern us up in prayer. And so Lord, that's what we're doing. We're offering these persons and even people that might be in our heart that weren't even mentioned up to you. We lift up Jane to you and we just ask for your healing touch to be upon her. We know she's in some pain, but we're praying that um, 
they can be controlled and that all the healing will take place with her broken ribs and broken sternum. And so we're uh, just around her um, as she walks through this time. And we're going to throw Samantha to you. We know she continually suffers from different health issues, but we're just asking that you would be with her, that you would take away the pain from the migraine and all other pains that she's been experiencing, Lord. We just pray your gentle touch upon her. And also we lift up Brian to you and we just um, just pray that he would be at peace as he anticipates his surgery in November. And be with his family as well as they um, wait for the surgery to take place. We're just asking that the surgery does exactly what they're hoping it will do and that he will become pain free and able to go back to his normal routine. And Lord, we just praise you for son and we thank you for what you're doing in his life and we just ask that you would especially be um, with the probation officer that they would just, um, their hearts would just join together, Lord, in a way that, um, that they may not anticipate, that they would get along and that um, even though the officers supposed to keep an eye on him. We just pray that that relationship would develop and they have a chance to share with each other um, their hearts. And Lord, we also lift up Lynette to you and we just ask that you would be um, with her and provide healing for the cancer that she's um, been going through, Lord, and now that it's spread to the bones. We just ask that you would just surround her with peace and her family with peace as she walks through this. But we're also asking for a healing touch to be upon her. And Lord, we lift up Daryl's um, friend's son to you. Um, and we just ask that you would be um, with him as he's going through cancer as well. And we just ask that you would provide him with doctors um, that would know exactly what needs to be done and that um, they can find a treatment that would control this cancer. Um, and Lord, we just um, really have come to hate this disease and all that it does in people. And we just ask that you would especially give peace to family members as they watch their family members walking through this um, cancer that, the, that they're suffering from. And so Lord, just be with them and surround them as well and give them that peace. And Lord, um, we also lift up Chuck to you and we just thank you that he's here this morning and we just pray your continued hand of healing upon him as well. And we just thank you that he has the strength to continue to come to church. And so we just ask a blessing for him and Carol. Um, if they were able to come, then they may just sense your presence and love uh, surrounding them. And we also lift up Keith to you. Um, we just ask that they think it may be a stroke, but Lord, we're just praying it wasn't a stroke and that he would have, um, it would be something else that he would still be able to have full movement um, of his body. Um, and we just ask that we would just surround him and his family as well, give them peace as they wait for what is going on with him. And we also lift up Michelle to you who's suffering with pneumonia, and we just ask that the medication that she's being given that it would do exactly what it needs to do and clear her lungs. Um, and Lord, just be with her as she just walks through this time as well. And Lord, we also lift up Gary to you. We're praising you that the surgery went well, but we're also asking for complete healing after this surgery, where it, it does heal the way it's supposed to heal, but especially that you would just give him relief from all the pain that he's been suffering through, whether it be with medication or just you giving him the, what he needs to walk through this time um, where the pain is so severe. And so Lord, we just pray, pray a blessing over him and his wife and family for the sake. Um, just watch and wait to see what's going to happen. And Lord, we just thank you that you continue to be with us and provide for us, and we just thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. Help us to um, just continue to draw closer to you, especially when we're going through times of trouble, and we know, we know that we have no control over the situation and what's happening, but help us to trust you more and more each day. We ask all of this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give 
us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For God is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will the ushers please come forward for the morning offering?
church. I you know, worship him at home all the time, especially now with everybody having their services online. But it is so important to be a part of a family so that when we are going through difficult times, we're there to encourage one another and um, pray for them. And you, know, you think of the people of the Bible, um, how they struggled and the way they got through was leaning on God. And sometimes you do drift apart. And when you do drift apart, that's what the family of God is for, to bring you back and show you the way. So I just, this week, I think you should just appreciate the people that you have in this church who have prayed for you and helped you through difficult times and be thankful to God um, that he continues to bless us so that we can bless others. That's great. God, we do thank you for the placing us in this place and that we can be with people who we know care about us and pray for us and encourage us when we're going through difficult times. And so, Lord, I pray that we all may be open to when we see others hurting so that we can be an encouragement and a light for them. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great week.